la la. And this is my CG Roebling. But before we get into the subject du jour, I'm just giving her a little bit of a touch up with garlic alcohol at the base because she had scale. And I just want to make sure that that remains in the past tense. I want to also give a very, very special shout out to everybody that is watching today that knows what all these images in the beginning were about. Just to let you know that I appreciate your support over the years. And anybody that is new to my channel, I want to welcome you. And I hope that you subscribe and that you stay. And I will link the videos that you may not be familiar with in the description, which will catch you up with what is going on with my CG Robling. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's got a virus. And that was because my conditions changed and she doesn't have the nice cozy little life anymore in the winter holding space. No supplemental lights, no heating. It's okay to already like this video, even though I'm dragging the suspense out a little bit. It's okay. Go ahead and like the video. I doubt you will be disappointed. So thank you for doing so. I appreciate it. Meanwhile, because I think that she is virused, and now you can hear me saying, uh, what do you mean you think? I thought we'd all established that. But anyway, because I think she's virused, she stayed outside for the first time in her existence in my collection in the Blooming Alley and overwintered there, enduring temperatures down to five degrees Celsius. Yes, and in Lekka and self-watering. She doesn't have cold damage. She has the symptoms of a virus. And this spotting has increased a little bit, but not since the warmer temperatures began. So maybe that has stopped or we are going to see more of it developing come the next winter. Either way, she is going to stay outside. There's not that much room in the inn. And for that reason, I'm protecting other orchids that would, for the time being, appear to be healthy. So the blooming of 2023, I've been watching how the sheath of the lead that always blooms, how that has been developing and everything looked really normal. I was like, oh, hey now, this is awesome. But I was also very suspicious about what the blooms would look like because no matter be it during the summer or late fall, I've had a couple of bloomings that were not ideal at all. Anyway, at the time of filming this video, we are at the end of August. Let me show you what came out of the sheath. And whatever you see, don't click away from this video because <laughs> this orchid, she has something else in store. That gives me a little bit of a head scratching moment again. CG Roebling is not a boring orchid at all. Right, here comes the big reveal. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, everybody that knows her history, I want to hear from you in the comments. Look at these two blooms. So the growth that she is blooming on is the lead that is always blooming. There we go. And it is much smaller because one could say I had kind of given up on this orchid. I didn't fertilize her as heavily as I could have. In hindsight, should have. Or is it possible that my reduced fertilizer levels have resulted in a better blooming? Now, I still believe that she is virus. There are still some little like wet spot looking kind of blemishes on her sepals, which were there with the deformed blooms. But this is almost perfection for a hobby grower like myself. The flare is perfect. The lips are perfect. Their shape is perfect. She smells perfect. <laughs> Beautiful rose fragrance coming from her. And you can see that for the first time, I have had to also support the blooms because I did reduce the fertilizer. So her spike is not as strong as it was two years ago when it stood proud and supported these amazing blooms. Now, my thumb to pinky is 20 centimeters. And that was her first blooming with me back in 2020 I had 20 centimeter blooms we're almost there we're just a little bit shy of 20 centimeters for a single bloom but honestly I am not complaining one bit I'm just a little bit more curious now as to what is this all about so let me direct your attention to the second lead because that was the one that I was always curious about because that hasn't bloomed since the first deformed blooms showed up. So I did get the second lead to bloom, but then nothing for a while. 
and then no growth because I wanted to see, you see there's two in here and I wanted to see if both of them could potentially be virused or is one of them only virused, which would be the one that's, you know, kept blooming the deformed blooms. This one produced a sheath. Everything was fine. Everything looked normal, but looky here, this bud is without a sheath. And it's possible it's going to blast because I've been moving this orchid around. I've had to flush her, you know, the treatment and the care continues despite buds. So I'm a little bit concerned. We may not get to see this bud bloom out because yeah, you move them into a different location and they can throw a fit, especially if there already is an uncertainty about this orchid. So fingers crossed because I'm really curious to see what this bud does. The lip is already starting to unfurl a little bit, but it's all a bit weird. No sheath with sheath. It would be a first time as well that this lead bloomed without a sheath. Insane. But I wanted to share her with you because she's gorgeous and I am absolutely thrilled. And I'm also very curious to hear what you have to say about this when you know the history of this orchid. And if you're back here to comment because you've watched the videos out of the link, let me know what you think as well. In the meantime, I'm a very grateful owner of a CG Roebling again that is blooming beautifully. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.